I just went to a physical therapist the other day, Cairo, cracked my back, Armenian. Mm -hmm. Has strong hands. Little Armenia is another one of LA's beautiful ethnic enclaves. And since Armenian people have such a complex history, their diaspora lends itself to a wide range of dishes that are a little Middle Eastern, a little Russian, Polish, and Lebanese, just to name a few. And although most Armenians now reside in Glendale, California, Little Armenia remains as the urban center of food and culture. Let's see what this excursion brings us. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a brand new series called Takeout Only. Woo! You got Ryan Benson with us. What's up, guys? You guys, we're in Little Armenia. I've heard of Little Armenia for years. We've lived in LA, but we've never been here. And it is takeout only. We gotta practice some social distancing right now, but it's all good because we wanna try some new food and still get that experience. LA actually has the second largest population of Armenians outside of Armenia. Kardashians are half Armenian. Dude, Kim Kardashian, she, doesn't had, she had her 37th birthday at one of the restaurants. All right, you guys, we are at our first of three spots on our little Armenia crawl to Ron Bakery. And remember guys, take, take out, out only. only. Okay. Are right, you handing me a bag of lemons? <laughs> the lemons um, are supposed to go on the lemajun. The lemajun is known as the Armenian pizza. Yes. So no cheese though, right? No cheese. You can put cheese on top, like a nice feta. You still have to support local businesses. For hell yeah. Still yeah. order delivery, still get takeout. The homie right here okay. is folding it up yeah. like a New York slice. Yeah. All right. Slice. But it, it was recommended to squeeze a little bit of lemon on top. Lemon it up. Lemon. <laughs> <laughs> Lemajun, Armenian pizza. Only a dollar fifty, right? Only a dollar fifty. This kind of tastes a little bit like that uh, Chengdu street food, the Gold Queen. Yeah. That's like a Chinese pizza pocket. Man, I got that's us nice. traditional Armenian yogurt drink. <clears throat> I got David a sparkling cider. This is then, from Georgia. Yeah. Not the state, the country, the country Georgia. Georgia. The country. It is recommended to shake this. Mm. Okay. Wow. Okay. That's a really nice yogurt flavor. That is not sweet though. I, I thought it was gonna be <laughs> sweet. A sweet. This was easily the most pear tasting pear soda I've ever had. Moving on to Armenian pastry number two. Spicy cheese borek. Wow. It's a flat bread that's folded on top of each other. Right. These Armenian breakfast pastries, they're actually really light. Spicy cheese borek, 450. Nice and thin. That cheese is nice and spicy. All right, you guys, now we are moving into the lightning round here at the Armenian Tehran Bakery. All right, so we have Manish right here. We have a potato borek and then a cheese borek right here. A spinach, spinach and cheese. Spinach and cheese, okay. cheese borek. Not borat. I'm talking about borek. borek. Wow. Potato and spices inside. Nicely spiced potato, nice and orange. Got I like a the spinach oil. borek. $1.50. Wow. Recession proof right here, man. I taste three things. It goes lemon zest, onion, then spinach. Mm -hmm. Kind of tastes like a, a lot of very seedy. It Yo, definitely that has a unique flavor. It's biblical. <laughs> That's how old it yeah. tastes. I'm a big potato guy. All right, my favorite actually was the manish. Cheese borek here. This is tahini bread. This is a spinach and cheese kajapuri, and then this is a cheese kajapuri. This one doesn't have as much spice. You see this with a, a nice tea. The cheese borek is really good. This kind of really tastes like a like a Chinese almond cookie. You're definitely seeing influences from different places. Spinach and cheese. Oh, wow. that was good. That was my favorite. The spinach and cheese kajapori, I gotta give it to it. That was the one yeah, that, that you was said. The one. This was the standout, but actually everything was good. You know, if we weren't supposed to be social distancing right now, I would maybe not recommend eating these fully in your car. Yeah, a lot, yeah. Of, <laughs> a lot of crumb. Oh, wow. Look at the layers in this cookie. All right, I gotta go shake myself off and then let's go to the next spot. We are headed out to spot number two in Little Armenia. So we're going to Papillon Bakery. Um, they're known for their collection of sweet pastries as well as piroshkis. Yalla bra. Is this it? We're, we're right here though. Um, Let me just look on this map. This is it, this is it. The reason why it take, took me so long to get everything is they make everything here to order. So I got us a selection of 
punchiks, which are Armenian donuts. I heard the roots are from Poland, but they're filled with all different types of things because this spot is kind of like a modern spot. So this is a very famous Armenian fusion bakery called Papillon, but they do have some traditional items. All right, let's start here. Specifically the Lamajun. Oh. They look pretty similar. Very similar. Comparing Lamajun, guys, we're becoming experts slowly. <laughs> Oh, it's close for me because this one has more flavor in general, but the quality at Tehran, I think, beats it a little bit. Yeah. All right, so the Jingalov bread. This has spinach in it and then seven different herbs. Jingalov, Jingalov. 350. This bread is so soft. Mm. Sleeper. Yo, the considering man. it's straight veggies, I didn't expect to like it that much. It's delicious. Last that we have to compare is the cheese borek. This looks a little bit more like your conventional croissant. Cheese borek version two. Overall, I'd take the other one, but this cheese ha definitely has a sharper bite. I'll give it to Tehran. Sure. So far. So this is a, a meat and potato parashki. Mmm. I want to say, first of all, I always like the Russian Polish version, but this had even more herbs in it. Mm. Dude, this tasted like a beef stew inside of a donut. It's a five out of five. That's it, guys. The parashki Armenian empanada. Wow. Wow. The filling is much more, um, Middle, Middle Eastern, Middle Eastern, between the parashki and the Armenian empanada, it was yeah. on fire. Everything was like a meal inside of a donut. That was that was lit. The panchik's right here. This is gonna get messy, guys, I know it. So we got a variety. Each filling is different of these donuts. We don't know which one. How do we identify that? You just gotta bite in. Panchik's Armenian donuts. Let's see what's inside. <laughs> that was not a Corona cough, by the way, guys. I got custard. I think I got Oreo. And Nutella. I got a caramel one. Ooh, that is sweet and delicious, though. How can you guys describe it? How thin it is, and it actually doesn't feel that oily. Surprisingly. No. Wow, is that it? That's it? it. Oh. Hold up, man. I, I didn't want to share food too much, but I gotta take a bite out of the other end. Finger burns. Yo, which I don't. I don't know how they were able to have the top be so thin. Those were so good. But even concerning how much donut to filling ratio there was, there was like too much filling. How often do you say too much filling? Uh, I don't think I've ever said that yeah. before, actually. We are headed to Carousel. This is Kim Kardashian's favorite Armenian restaurant, or at least one that she had a birthday party at. In LA, that means a lot. Yo, I've been here Yo, before. Yo, we've been here before. <laughs> All right, guys. I got the spread for us. David, this is something you've been looking forward to. Yes. First off, we had to go wow. with the Mongolian dish. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you, uh, you gotta explain yourself. Mongolia at one time, Genghis Khan, Temujin, they pushed all the way that far into Eastern oh, Europe. Wow. So, uh, I believe that Eastern Europe ended up adopting the Mongolian Monte. I don't know what kind of sauce that is, but... Mmm. The open topness makes it so that some of the meat got kind of charred and fried. We have Muhammad right here, which is a red pepper paste. Um, spread with crushed walnuts and then pomegranate molasses. <laughs> pomegranate walnut muhammara. Mm. Pomegranate, very, very prevalent. I love that a lot, David. It has that kind of like deep chili flavor, mm. but that brightness that comes through from the fruit. We got the main event right here. We have chicken kebab. This is a kofta, which is like a minced meat. And then you have your straight beef kebab over here. But the pita's got like uh, tomato spice in them. I'll take the kofta. I'll go with the uh, beef then. Yo! I think I think we have to give the award to Messiest Eater today to, uh, to David. He's, <laughs> oh, he's, no wearing, doubt. he's wearing most of what we ate today. You know, oftentimes when you see people eat stuff in the car, it's like fast food, but we're eating like Gourmet Mediterranean <laughs> Armenian Lebanese food. Let's right. go. Kebabs. Kebabs. I did not anticipate the beef to be that tender. I've actually never really eaten kebabs like this before. Jock kofta kind of tastes like the gourmet Mediterranean like hamburger patty. Mm. All right, you guys, we had to get some air to finish up dessert, but believe me, there is nobody within even 10 feet of us right now. Social distancing. Here for dessert. We have Osmanli, a fried pastry with a little bit of syrup, rose syrup on top. Osmanli. No, that what? is so that's good. Like, that's one of the best desserts I've ever had. Dog, that was kind of like crispy chow mein with like cream on top. Oh, oh snap. That was the dessert chow mein. All right, we have one more dessert here. Uh, it's called Halawe Bejebin. It's a cheese dessert that has pistachio on top and another part kind of custard. Halawe Bejebin. It was like a juicy flour. 
rose custard. Mm. Dude, oh. John might have to try this. Man is shocked after eating Lebanese dessert. <laughs> All right, you guys, that does it for the takeout show, the Little Armenia Enclave episode. Order delivery, support your local businesses. Top two things oh, that yeah. stood well, out I gotta to. say, for me, the thing that really stood out was the mezne. It just really took me back to like a different era, maybe of civilization. Beef parashki that we had at Papillon. Like, you had the mix of the Polish with the Armenian. The thing that wowed me was the Monty because I had actually been to like Greek restaurants before. You never had, I'd never been offered the Monty. The Monty. What was your favorite sweet thing we had though? I think the last two desserts we had with the rose water syrup, to me, it was like neck and neck at 5.0, 5.0. I have to go with the kanafe just because it had a nice balance of the sweetness. I think that was the first dessert in a long time that kind of like blew me away, to be honest. Even though every shop was on the same street, it felt like a whole new experience. What I realized today was that, one, I had never really had Armenian food before. Two, it's delicious, affordable, with flavors I'd never had. And three, maybe some of this food isn't meant to be eaten in the car. It goes to show you that again, LA is such an interesting place. You can take many road trips to unique places just within the city. You can easily drive past these streets for years without pulling over and diving into a culture. So sometimes it's just nice to stop and smell the borek. Stay safe, wash your hands, we're all in this together. Please let us know in the comment section below what you guys know about Armenian food. Please let us know another enclave or type of food that you would like to see us check out in the LA area. And until next time guys, stay safe, we out. Peace. Peace. Hey. Are you handing me a bag of lemons? <laughs> the lemons um, are supposed to go on the lemajun.